Welcome back to Red Vibe and welcome back to the Chart and Athletic Career Mode where we are going to have to be very reactive in the next couple of episodes, maybe more so in the January transfer window, but the point being, there's been a lot of changes to this Charlton squad in real life, both in terms of additions and in terms of exits as well. Now Dylan Phillips, our highest rated player in the squad at the moment, doesn't play for Charlton anymore. He got a permanent move to Cardiff. Uh, who else have we got in here? Um, Oz Tuma, he's gone out on loan. He's gone to Bristol Rovers, one of the best players for us this season so far in the in the career mode. George Lapsley, another one who secured a loan move away at Mansfield. Then you've got a load of incomings to add to this squad as well. You've got the likes of Omar Bogle, Paul Smith. It's just too many players to even completely mention, but it completely changes the shape of this Charlton squad. And I suppose when they do release an update, we've got a decision to make on whether to restart this career mode. As I said at the beginning of this series, if, if I did that, I would just replicate the amount of wins and losses that we got. Let's say by the end of today's episode, we've played 11 games. I will just replicate the amount of points that we've got. We can't control the teams around us so that we'd have... Uh, yeah, say, say it was right now, 22 points in eight games. I'd just replicate that um, by, you know, saving it before each game and restarting if I need to. So... With that out of the way, we'll continue on today. We've got some difficult games. Rochdale is the first of those. I think I'm going to have to, just for my purely for my brain, not include players like Oztuma and Phillips anymore. I think we're going to have to start giving Amos a shout, uh, maybe Elliot Gomez as well, uh, purely because these players have moved on in real life. We'll also, if we do continue this safe, sell them in the transfer window. But I, I think I probably am veering towards restarting and, and doing what I originally said. So, let's get into this Rochdale game, and uh, all we can do is try and win the games. As long as we win the games, it means that it still gives us wins if we were to restart it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, we still have a huge responsibility to win these games. It's just going to be that little bit harder, because we're going to have to rotate the squad accordingly. So, before we get into this game, I've got two options here. So, one of them is to do what, I've, what you can see I've done, put Elliot on that left wing, Williams behind and Nikkei up front. The other thing I could do is put Kaufman on for Elliot, put Johnny back to the uh, to the left wing position, then put Kaufman up front with the Nikkei behind. The reason why I'm probably slightly more reluctant to do that is because uh, Nikkei's obviously scored like 10 goals this season. It's like a ridiculous return. So to change him of all the players, I feel like would be a bit of a disservice to him. So, for now, I think we go with Elliot Gomez on that left wing. I think we drop Johnny Williams in behind. And then, yeah, we, we keep an EK up front. Worth mentioning as well, Crowley and also Levitt can play in the attacking midfield positions. Might also be worth maybe having a look whether we can get Morgan to be to improve his attacking stats and become a CAM as well. These are just all short-term fixes to... More of a long-term problem that will be fixed, hopefully, when the squad update comes out. But for now, guys, we are going to get into this game against Rochdale. Try and get the result. So, Rochdale are 17th in the table. They look like they might be playing a very fatigued individual at centre-back by the name of their captain, McShane. So, we could hopefully capitalise on that, particularly with a Nikkei's attacking presence. We're going to sim the match because we've got games against Hull and, I think, Oxford... Oxford's next, and then I think Hull is after that. So those those are two teams that are going to be in and around the top six, top ten, you know, the top echelons of the table. So, yeah, I think this one is a good one to sim. Jump in if we need to, as as you know, is a, is a good tactic at the moment in this career mode. And, uh, yeah, save maybe starting. Um, save a game that we start from the beginning for one of the Oxford or Hull clashes. Um, we've changed... Uh, sorry, it's just throwing me off because I, I didn't realise... It did it across saves. Um, guys, if you haven't seen yet, we did do the very first episode of Clubs in Trouble and we took control of West Ham and it's a, the, the whole idea of the series, it's a one season rebuild. So it was a lot of fun to record. It's, it's, it's very um, interesting to see how some of the players developed. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't watched it yet, it's one of those sort of more long form rebuild style videos think jared hd i don't know if you guys are aware of him big um career mode youtuber um so yeah that that was the thinking behind it and uh yeah hopefully lots more clubs to come as Charlton are on the attack um yeah and the reason i mentioned that oh is because that episode is what i changed the settings for to make it squares 
uh, you, like your, you can change the shape of your opponent. You can also set them to a particular colour. I haven't done the colour thing because I like to know what colour my opponent is wearing. But what I have done is, is change them to squares because I think oh, it's, yeah. it's a nicer aesthetic. Anyway, this game's another one of these just boring nil-nils. I wonder if this is a problem with lower league football. That you just don't get many goals in the Sims. Although, look at this. Their number nine's in the box. Twice. Back to goal. Oh, that's a good goal. Oh, it's Ben Amos. What a save. All right, we'll, we'll hopefully cut to some more action. It could be right now, though. Is he onside? He is onside. It's Elliot Gomez. Give it to Chucks. Give it to Chucks. He's got to score it. Oh, there we go. It's Johnny Williams from that central position who gets the goal. And that is a good thing to see from a Charlton perspective right now. Johnny Williams showing us that he can play left wing and CAM very comfortably in this game. I think he scored on the sim from both. And his finishing isn't necessarily the best either on this game. His, his, his scoring attributes, like his finishing, his long shot, his composure, not necessarily the best. So good to see from Johnny. And that is half time. Rochdale have had 74% possession, but it doesn't matter because the one shot that we've, and one chance even that we've created, we have managed to get a goal on the end of it. And I, I really do think that this sim is such a brilliant step forward for career mode, but I think they maybe need to make it slower or make the actual gameplay faster in relation to how quick the clock goes. Um, because something about having one chance each per half is just not quite right. As Rochdale come forward here, we're defending very well. Can we pitch the ball? Oh, that's well played, boys. That's well played. Let's go. Okay, it's uh, Gilby to Chucks. Let's get a second. Come on. Is that onside? It is. Gomez. Oh, unlucky, unlucky. Here comes Johnny Williams in the box. Cross it. Oh, Chucks was there. Couldn't quite get it in. Well won, boys. We, we're getting a lot more of the possession now. Let's have a look at our player ratings as well. Chucks and Williams linking up. Back to Williams. Is it his second goal? It is. Johnny Williams on this sim, mate. He is a goal-scoring machine. And it's time that Chucks turns provider all of a sudden. And he's got 10 goals this season. But I think two assists for Johnny Williams in this game alone. And a 9.3 rating there for Johnny Williams. We're going to make a couple of substitutions here as well. Who should we bring on? Right, so we've brought on Levitt. And we've also brought on, uh, who have we brought on? Alfie Doughty at left wing, as you can see there. So hopefully they can make a bit of an impact. Can we get a third goal in the last 20 minutes or so of this game? That is the that is what we want to do. Ben Purrington, good defensive um, left back on FIFA. Very much enjoy playing with him. Oh, oh, it's a little chance here for Rochdale. Are they going to get one back? Are they going to get one back? They are. Oh, do I have to jump in now? I think I do. I think the last 10 minutes, it's got, to, it's got to be me jumping in to try and secure the points because we can't have them getting momentum. We're playing quite deep. I've still got the settings on balanced, the quick tactics, but Charlton seem to be like naturally dropping off a little bit, although they've broken through the lines. They've definitely got momentum. That is brilliant from Perrington, who I was just praising. Can we get the second tackle in? No, they've turned. They've turned. This is what they always do on the wings. No matter who you play, even your own players when you're in the sim, they just love to get on the wings and turn inside. We've broken, though. Williams. Oh, I tried the drag back, but it didn't work. It doesn't matter, though. We've released Crowley down this right-hand side. Oh, he's tried the, the sort of fake dummy and uh, hasn't come off. Right, so here's Crowley. Great time pass. Who's in there? It's got to be Chucks. Chucks, get on this. Oh, he can't stop scoring, the lad. He just cannot stop scoring. The Rochdale players drop to the floor, and this boy, Chucks and EK, what a tank. He leapt like a salmon. Did he, though? I don't know. I don't know if, it was just, if he leapt. I, I don't know. I just put the cross in, and he was just there. Let's have a look at the replay. It all happened in a bit of a flash. Um... Let's have a look at the replay here. It was a good, it was a good finish. He was there. He, he showed his presence. He wanted to win the ball, and he did so. A little chip ball inside. Nice. Yeah, no, he didn't really leap. He just sort of... The defender didn't get there, and Chucks capitalised on it. Great little finish. And Chucks with his 11th of the season, I believe, now. And we are going to be walking the league if Chucks and EK can continue this into the, the latter months. I'm sorry, but he's just unreal. He just really is. And that is his... Does it say? Is it going to tell me? Yeah, 11th goal of the league season. Wow. Have we got time for one more? Possibly if Johnny Williams can get this this pass right. And I, it looks like he will. And who's that? It's Crowley over there on the... Oh, unlucky. I think that's going to be full time now once they get this ball up the pitch. 
because that is time plus added time gone. And there we go, a 3-1 away win. Had to jump in just to make sure Rochdale didn't get that goal back. And in the end, it turned out that we got ourselves a goal. And Chucks and EK continuing his goal scoring form as we have discussed in great detail. And the other two goals for Johnny Williams, who is the best player for Charlton on the sim by far at the moment. I think he scored like maybe four goals on the sim. And I mean, goals don't go in in, in particular abundance when you do simulate the game. But yeah, Johnny's always there. We got four shots. Three of those shots went in. We had 29% possession, again, largely due to the weird way that the sim works. But let's have a look. This got a flash by so quickly. Wimbledon got an away victory at Ipswich. That's good for us. I didn't see Sunderland's result there if they played. But we're hoping for Sunderland to drop points so that we can just, you know, just break away from them. Now, here's what I hate about the press conference, right? Kaufman has literally missed, I think, only one game. Now, they asked me a question specifically about Kaufman and none of the answers looked like they were going to do Kaufman any favours. It was all going to... It seemed like every answer, no matter which one I picked, was going to make Kaufman's form go down. And you can see his morale's gone to unhappy. So the question they asked me was, Kaufman's not been in good form, everyone can see it. And I wanted there to be an option where I, I would say, like, no, he's just being rested. Like, he's still in great form. He's only missed one game. There was no such option. Every single one was, like, about the team or about Kaufman needing to improve. And um, yeah, so unfortunately now Kaufman's gone down from like a plus four, plus five to a plus one. Same with Washington, actually, because he hasn't played for a couple of games. But the starting 11 still laughing like we look Crowley at the moment with that plus six is a 78 rated winger in this league. That is ridiculous. Everybody else doing well. But just a shame that players that have done so well throughout the season, like Kaufman, can all of a sudden just have their form drop off. Bit frustrating, but we move. Oh, guys, also... One thing that was a complete just like brain fart from me, when I set up a scouting network in China and in Denmark, I thought that it was a youth, <laughs> it was the youth academy, like a scout going to find youth players. It wasn't. It was somebody going to look at the Chinese league and the Danish league to sign like first team players. Hence why a couple of these players, oh, maybe not a couple of these players, but some of the players that are on the um, transfer hub are popping up. So what we're going to do now is rectify that. And also, that's the reason why, if you remember back to that episode, why not many countries were popping up that we could go to. So with that being said, let's go and set up a youth academy somewhere. Now, whether or not this continues, again, it's completely contingent on whether we, we restart after the squad update. But let's continue right now as though we're continuing this save file. And what we will do is set up a scouting... Wait, is this is this how to do it? Yeah, I think it is. Set up a scouting network. Here we go, lots more countries now. We love to see this. So as I said, we have not yet, after two whole FIFAs of going to China, managed to recruit somebody who has been a mainstay in the first team from China. I don't know why, something's in my head that we need to improve our team using Chinese youth prospects. Don't ask me why, We just this just needs to happen. So we're gonna go to three months for China. Uh, for three months to China, and we're going to look for, I guess, any. Like, I don't really care what position they play in. Goalkeeper, defender, winger, whatever. Just bring me Chinese youth prospects. You know what I mean? Now, how much is it going to cost us to hire a youth scout? Three-star, two-star. We could go for a real big one in Daniel Thomas. Um, we could go for one of these boys. I think we might go for... Yeah, let's go for William Eck, because he's he's Scandinavian. Um, doesn't take too much out of our transfer budget and we'll send him to Denmark and hopefully we'll find ourselves a couple of little gems. Um, should we go for a specific type of player? Let's go for a technically gifted player in Denmark. So we've now got China and Denmark officially as two countries where we're looking for youth prospects. So let's hope that something good comes of that. So before we get into our next game, we're here on Albie Morgan's development plan now he's gone up to a 60 so for league one that's a good substitute rating particularly for a player of his age at 20 where you're going to see that go only go up and normally in quite a short space of time but anyway what we want to do is get that finishing attacking positioning long shots vision dribbling all up and if we make him a CAM, naturally a CAM which is the position in real life where I think he should be playing at the moment at least 
Um, it's going to only take five weeks for him to fully transition to a centre attacking midfielder. Now, I think that's a good shout for Albie Morgan. So that is what we're going to do. And something that we haven't been able to do in past FIFAs that, again, I'm just going to praise FIFA for, for this change again. It's fantastic that we can do things like this. Five weeks it's going to take and Albie Morgan will hopefully transition to the backup for Johnny Williams in that attacking midfield spot now that we're not using Oz Tuma. And by the way, if we do continue this save, of course, we'll sell Oz Tuma, Phillips... Uh, we'll, we'll potentially, okay, we'll sell Phillips, we'll potentially loan Oz Toomer and Lapsley out so to uh, align with real life and we'll invest in those areas of the squad using our money. By the way, Brendan Sarpong Wiradu completes his transition back from a left back to a right back, which we are going to officially change. However, what that does mean, as I previ previously explained, is that now if we go to the squad and go down to Brendan Sarpong Wiradu, he will now be able to fill in at both positions so you can see he is a right back left back center mid and right mid but his first and foremost position is right back which is true to real life so that's good we're still waiting for charlie barker to officially become a center back other than that though everybody else is looking good naruse has gone up to a 65 by the way and i think that is all for now so our next two games do come against top tier sides in league one we've got oxford united it's the carl robinson derby as i like to call it um, they are fifth in the table, so joint points with Wigan, joint points with Ipswich, one of the forces of the league. Hull, however, have dropped off a little bit, down in 14th place, having only won three and lost four of their games, drawing two as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start this Oxford game. I know it's at the Valley, but we're still going to start this Oxford game from the get-go. And I think we might sim the whole game and jump in if we need to, which, let's face it, we probably most likely will... But for now, let's start this Oxford game and focus on one game at a time. Try and beat Carl Robinson as he returns once again to the Valley. Here we are, the players stepping onto the pitch at the Valley. And uh, let's have a look at the team lineup because I sort of skipped through it. So we'll have a look at it in the, in the match introductions and also have a look at Oxford's team lineup as well. So here we go. Amos in goal, Naruse, Oshilaja, Pierce, and Purrington at the back. We've got Gilby and Forster Kasky in midfield with Johnny Williams in attacking midfield as well. We've got Anike up front, Crowley off of the right-hand side, and Alfie Doughty ahead of Elliot Gomez now on the left-hand side. Just very keen to get Doughty on some good form. One, because I want to see him do well, and two, because I want to see him transition to a left winger more quickly, and they do so more quickly when they're on good form. Doughty at the moment, average form. He's got like a minus one next to his name, which means average to below average. Here is Oxford's lineup: Eastwood in goal, Claremore, Musinio, and Ruffles at the back. And unless they're playing five at the back, I think that's Gorin in midfield at the base. Yeah, it is. Brannigan and Sykes, good players in central midfield. Henry, another good player off the right. Taylor down the middle. Is that Lyle Taylor? Surely not. And Ford off the left. No, that's got to be Matty Taylor, isn't it? I think that's Matty Taylor up front. So a very good league one side. Can try and beat them, though. I like my chances. Purrington passes inside to Dead Josh Elijah, who has been on very good form for us at the back, which is why I'm hesitant and reluctant to put Dunn in too soon ahead of him. It's a Nike and Forster Kasky linking up. To another two players that have been fantastic for us. Um, oh, Oxford very difficult to break down, I've noticed. But Anike, use that strength, pass it to Williams. Williams, little stop and start, bang, Anike! Oh, he's hit the post. What a move that was, and Doughty can't get the tackle in. What a move that was, and Anike just couldn't finish it off. But good signs from us, good signs. We've worked a throw on up this right-hand side. Who wants to come and get it? Both of you, it seems. Okay, we'll give it... I was meant to be to Williams. I was just blatantly meant to be to Williams. Oh, dear. Here comes Taylor. Back to Brannigan. Oh, it's a great block from Naruse. Can he get there the second time? He can, and the young Japanese left back is really improving down this right-hand side. Crowley. I'll pre I've pressed the pass button already to try and release Williams, but we're going to have to try something else. Oh, we're tackled. Game's being unresponsive. I don't know why. Taylor to Ford. Don't let him get the cross in. Don't let him get the cross in. Well played. Still a chance, though. It's Brennigan. Driven pass back to Sykes. He's going to try and turn Forster Kasky. Forster Kasky's not having it. He said, mate... I'm Gandalf, and you shall not pass. You know what I mean. Here's Anike, Bosch, Williams. Oh, it's poor. Good tackle from Oshilaja. Straight forward to Anike. Williams, what are you doing? What are you doing? Occupying the exact same space as Anike, getting in his way and ruining our attack. We've squeezed it through, though. Anike, oh, it's a poor pass. Come on. Here's Sykes. 
Looking for that run. Careful, here? careful, boys. Or should I just stand your ground? Let's be smart about this defensively. Henry gets the cross in. Lots of space back there for Ford, who had the, a golden opportunity to put Oxford 1-0 up at the Valley against all the odds. And he was left alone by Naruse. Naruse does do that. On the ball, he's great. Off the ball, he can be a bit suspect, Naruse. But it was always the chance in the end from Ford, and uh, Oxford could have grabbed themselves a goal there. Wasn't to be, though. Doughty. Looking to run into the space, and he does so. We just need him in there, whoever that is, Chucks, I think, to beat his man. Oh, that's got to be a penalty ref. And Moore does concede the penalty, I think it was. I mean, I, I shouted for it, but it was kind of soft. A little bit. I mean, I think there's been a little bit of sportsmanship in there. for um, Sportsmanship. A little bit of deceit in there from Anike. I mean, it looked like he just went to kick the ball and kick the back of uh, Moore's leg. However, we earned ourselves a penalty. Never confident when taking these penalties. It's Crowley over it. Is he our best penalty taker? No, he's not. It looks like Forster Kasky would be a better option. And we will go with Jake Forster Kasky. We're going to go bottom left. And that was nowhere near bottom left. But who cares when it goes into the back of the net? Jake Forster Kasky, another goal for him this season. And he gets Cholton off the mark in what's been a difficult opening half an hour or so for the Addicts. Now, you, you saw where I aimed there. In the end, it just went to the left. Good height for the keeper, but luckily for us, the keeper didn't dive and we get the goal. So, as much as I'm not happy with how the penalty went, in terms of what I wanted to try and do with the penalty, it doesn't matter because we've scored. So, happy days. Williams, that was lucky for him, actually, that he's kept the ball there. And Nikkei out to Crowley. Crowley... Again, as I always say, not the best pace, but seemingly enough to beat uh, whoever that is. Oh, we've we've been kind of fortunate there. Anike into Johnny Williams. Williams shoots. And that is the difference between Johnny Williams on the sim and Johnny Williams when you're controlling him in a match. He cannot finish his dinner. It was his left foot and that is an awful shot. I mean, all the composure of a, of a, of a dirty bin bag, really. Rodriguez. Scoops a ball out to the far side of the pitch where Henry picks it up. Henry looking dangerous like he wants to do something. They're looking like they've got purpose, Oxford. And they've worked their way into the box. And that is a good he header from Taylor. Well, it was a good run from Taylor and maybe not such a good header in the end. And he puts it wide, the number nine. They are looking dangerous, Oxford. If that was just a little bit more accurate... They, I mean, if they were a little bit more accurate in general with their with their chances, they could be 2-1 up here in this game. But as it stands, still 1-0 to the Addicts. Forster Kasky into the path of Gilby, who looks for Anike, who is onside. Rolls his man. Oh, Anike with that. Oh, Anike. This boy. He is basically Jesus Christ at the moment. He just, everything he touches turns to gold. Is that what Jesus does? No idea. But what a goal from Chucks and EK from the drag back or the or the ball roll to the yeah just yeah look at that the way he just sold that defender and then buried it in the top corner what a finish as well the where the ball went in the back of that net as well look bang top bins you're not saving that keeper you're never saving that you know David De Gea is not saying that brilliant stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's half time. I've had a sneezing fit towards the end of that half. But we move. We're 2-0 to the good. A good Oxford side. They've been the best team that I've definitely played so far. Dangerous going forward. Perhaps should have had two of their own goals if they were a bit more clinical in the final third. Airs of how Charlton performed when they were under Carl Robinson's leadership. What are Sunderland doing right now? They are drawing uh, away to Lincoln. If Lincoln can keep them... Sorry, I've, I've had a sneeze. If I'm all bunged up. But if, if, if Lincoln can continue to hold them, then that's good news for us if we can hold our lead as well. Let's see if we can. Forster Kasky out to Alfie Doughty. It's well played. Williams back to Doughty. Doughty with a dummy. On to Forster Kasky. I need somebody to make a run. It's Forster Kasky into an EK. What's happened there? Is that... Is that Who's just come on for a minute and replaced Chucks and Ike? Because that that just doesn't compute with me, that. I'm malfunctioning right now. Williams, great vision. Releases Doughty. Doughty. Oh, not the pass I wanted, but, I mean, we move. Purrington. Williams! Oh, my God! He could actually score in the game! What a finish! What a volley from Johnny Williams! That is brilliant. And he takes a bow, and rightly so. It was a great cross from Ben Purrington. 
I mean, Doughty's like weird pass, weird through ball, in the end worked out for the best. And Johnny Williams in there to finish it off. And we are now looking to embarrass Oxford, despite them being by far the most difficult opponent we've faced so far in the career mode. So well played. Brennigan. Look at all this space that Sykes is in right now. Back to Brannigan. If he can pick a pass, it could be an opportunity for Oxford. But Amos behind it. I mean, it wasn't the best place to take the shot from. Always likely that the keeper would have a good chance of saving that. But they're still working chances, Oxford. They're not giving up on this game yet. Williams, by the way, releasing Alfie Doughty. Can he maybe score his first goal from the left wing? Doesn't look like it. And he's still got the ball. Back to Williams. To Gilby, bang! Oh, that's a better shot from Gilby, but it just sails wide. A lot more power and purpose behind that strike, but just the wrong side of the post in the end by a whisker as well. Perhaps a last chance here for Oxford. And uh, no, that is going to be the full-time whistle. Charlton with three goals and three points on the day. Brilliant performance again. Clinical. A couple of maybe more goals for either side were possible. It could have been like a 5-2 or something there. But ultimately, we, we come away with a pretty emphatic scoreline against a very good team in the league. And we take the spoils here at the Valley. Let's have a look at the player ratings and uh, yeah, see who played well. So Forster Kasky gets man of the match an 8.8 .8 and 8.9 for the other two players substituted. So I hope all three of those got standing ovations when they left the pitch. Harsh on Morgan. Morgan played some good stuff when he came on. He only gets a six. Amazing to me how Darren Prattley, whose only contribution was losing the ball once, gets a 6.1 ahead of Morgan, who strang lots of good passes together. Very harsh. Uh, Purrington, very good. Doughty, again, pretty pretty good display for him, from him as well. Kaufman off the bench, good, but didn't score. Played well. Oshilaja, brilliant performance from him and Gilby as well. Uh, everybody else doing all right, doing all right. And ultimately, a great performance and a great day out at the Valley. Let's see, did, did Sunderland win? Did Sunderland win? They did. They came back and won. 3-2 against Lincoln, which means they continue to put pressure on us. And we now have to beat Hull if we want to get this uh, this first place cemented down. So I completely missed the Southampton game when I went over the fixtures earlier today. So we probably won't get round to playing this, uh, this fixture against Hull City until the beginning of the next game. We've had an offer, offer withdrawn for Lapsley. Somebody came in and wanted to buy him. Again, I'm only ever looking to loan him because I still believe that Lapsley can come back and perform well for us at Charlton. Um, Pierce has gone down to a 67. I don't know if he already had or if that's brand new. We've also got Elliot who's gone up to a 68, which is very promising. And those, I think, are the only changes that we have seen so far. What we're going to do, we are going to allow our sort of first 11 to have a pop at Southampton in the Cup on the sim. Now, I will jump in if it's a close game, but there's always the chance that we might be like 2 or 3-0 down because it is a Premier League side. We're literally two leagues below and we're not ready to take on play teams like Southampton quite yet. However, we'll give it a good go as we change Charlie Barker's official position to a centre-back. That gives us more depth in the central area of defence. And also, Charlie Barker now, as I have explained, he will keep that right back as one of his possible positions. Um, I feel like Charlie Barker's pretty highly rated for a 17-year-old. So I feel like he'll be a pretty good player in the future for us. But... As it stands now, he's not going to get in ahead of Dunn, Oshilaja, Pierce, and even Prattley, who's filling in at centre-back. Who, it seems, has gone down to a 64. Or did that already happen? I don't know. But let's get into this sim against Southampton. Again, we're going to give it... We're going to give our, our, our regular 11, if you like, the chance to, uh, to win on the sim here and see how we do. It would definitely seem like they're resting one or two players, but I'm still seeing, like, Danny Ings on the team sheet and a few other players that you see week in, week out in the Premier League for Southampton. So have I pressed quick sim or have I pressed sim match? Because it's taken a long time to load. Um, okay, it's the normal sim. So what is that here? Like, I don't know who Slattery is. They've got Adams with Ings up front. I don't know who Augustinson is. Oh, they must have signed him. He's a left back. I know him from Ultimate Team. Uh, Salisu, I don't know who that is, but probably a good sign. And I mean, they're, they're pretty full strength, Southampton. Let's not... Let's not beat around the bush, and it's going to be difficult for us to get anything out of this match, let's say that. Sorry, I was having a drink there, but Stuart Armstrong, Armstrong? Stuart Armstrong has scored, and Southampton take the lead after 16 minutes. Not a great start for the Addicts. If we can keep it a one-goal deficit, there's always the chance I'll jump in and save, uh, try and save us. 
Also, they might just do it themselves on the sim. Johnny Williams loves the sim. He gets tackled there, though. Uh-oh. Here comes Southampton again. Not before half-time. If we can keep this 1-0 at half-time, it's not bad for us, really. Just don't want two goals to go in. There we go. Okay, there's half-time. We'll continue to um, resume the game. We'll give it up until about 60-ish minutes. If it's still 1-0, there's always the chance I'll jump in. But we'll see. Chuck's has done well there. Oh, and he releases uh, Crowley down the right. Back to Naruse. No one ever wants to put that cross in. It does come in eventually, and away it goes from Southampton. Okay, that is 60 minutes played. Let's try and jump in to avoid conceding any more and see if we can grab the goal back to maybe take this game to pens. Oh, no, I think we're going to concede off the bat. Purrington does well to get in the way of Armstrong's shot. It's Walker Peters. He gets dispossessed by Purrington. Again, very, very solid from Ben Purrington. And it's Elliot breaking away. Look at this pace from Elliot. Is he going to be able to get across the defender inside? He does all right. Williams, back to Elliot. Elliot. Oh, I think he's offside. I didn't know whether to shoot or play an EK in. I opted to play the latter in. And I think he just went to an offside position. We've won the ball again, though. It's an EK to Williams. Back to an EK. An EK. Inside. Finesse. Oh, unlucky, son. Unlucky. Johnny Williams has had a... I wouldn't say a difficult game, but he's, he's a bit knackered and he hasn't quite had his finishing boots on in this game. So we are going to bring him off the pitch and we are going to bring on Kaufman. We're going to drop Chucks and Nike back to the attacking midfield position as Pierce is completely isolated. Nobody wants to support him. Luckily for... Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. We've lost the ball. It's Armstrong. I think we've got a toe in there. Oh, dear. Is this going to be a chance for Southampton from our own mistake? And I think they might get something off here. Redmond, no. He messes up. It's Naruse with the tackle. Up to... Uh, Kaufman, Kaufman, can he play this ball? Oh, it looks like a good one. Over to Elliot. Elliot, back inside. And can he go again? He can. He's in the box. It's Elliot. Elliot Gomez, go on, son. Oh, he's gone with his wrong foot. The way he took that ball was maybe my fault, but just the way he shifted it onto his right foot there, I wasn't massively, massively happy with it, but a good save from McCarthy. We're not playing bad on the counter-attack. Gonna fizz this ball in by Crowley. And Ike's there. Oh, I thought he'd scored, mate. Thought he had scored. Oh, we've got, to, we've got to bury one of these if we want to be getting a, a result out of this game. Gilby. What can he do with it? Lots of space for Anike here. Little touch to Kaufman. Can he return the favour? He can. It's Chuck's Anike. Little back heel for him. Kaufman! Oh, Kaufman off the bench. The Danish striker. Tell me why this man, after scoring so many goals off the bench, possibly a better goals to minutes record than Chuck's Anike himself. That's goals to minutes, by the way. Uh, tell me why this guy hasn't gone up from a 65. He's still sitting there at 65 rated, and I just don't understand it. Maybe we need to change his development plan, but at the moment, this boy off the bench is so dangerous. One of the most dangerous men right now in English football off the bench. He has to be. He has to be. The sheer amount of goals he scored off the bench. And he comes back against Premier League opponent, and look at Hasenhutl. Gutted. Gutted. What a uh, comeback here it could be for Charlton. If we can get another goal, whew, this could be this could be good signs. We've won the ball again. Gilby, straight through the middle. Chucks. Oh, I didn't want that pass. Shane Long, bursting forward to Danny Ings, using his strength to hold Jason Pierce off. Oh, Pierce doesn't quite get a foot in. Oh, no, that's so lucky. That is so lucky. Oh, I thought that had gone in. It's gone over from Shane Long. Wow, that bounce was very lucky. Amos didn't make himself big enough, or at least dived out of the way of it in the end, it seemed. And luckily for us, Shane Long scoops it over in the end. Uh-oh. Southampton with a chance here. Jason Pierce doing his very best to get in position. Naruse, great touch. Oh, well played, Naruse. Brilliant stuff from Naruse. Can we get forward one last time in this game? Who wants to run for me? Anybody want to run for me? Uh, Nikkei, who's that? Oh my God, this could be the moment. Please, please. Alex Gilby! No. It was the headlines. They were written for you, Alex. They were written for you, mate. And it's penalties now, which I am not confident going into this penalty shootout for. Oh, Alex Gilby, how have you managed to not score that one? Oh, the first one goes in. Brilliant. Okay. <sighs> I know we can do a little bit of taunting. It's Ward Prowse. We've gone the right way. Ben Amos coming in for Dylan Phillips, which to Dylan Phillips in this game will seem like for absolutely no reason. But it doesn't matter because he's pulling it off. Forster Kasky buries the second. If they don't score this one, I'm going to go down the middle. Oh, my God. We are going to win the penalty shootout. Let's go down the middle ourselves. It's Crowley. 
Oh, it just veered to the right. McCarthy gets his, his paws on it. Down the middle again. No, 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 to the right. Oh, almost went to the left. I know it's the only one of the three I didn't say. But let's go top left with Kaufman. No! How have you missed that? To the right. Oh, my God. They're going to turn it round. They're going to turn it round. It's Chucks and EK. It's a good finish from Chucks and EK. These penalties are not going anywhere near where I'm asking them to. I'm sorry, but you must be seeing this. And we need Vestergaard. Is this Vestergaard or Gustafsson to miss this? Right. Oh, almost stayed down the middle as well. Oh, sudden death. It's Alex Gilby. Bottom right. No, he's pinged it wide. Oh, no. We scored the first two. Southampton missed their first two. And it's Nathan Redmond to win it. Oh, he's put it wide. This is so intense. It's Naruse, the young Japanese right back. We're going to go down the middle. We're going to go down the middle. It's, that wasn't down the middle yet again, but we scored it. Please miss it. Please miss it, Romeo. He's going top right. Oh, he's put it wide. That's it, right? Yes, he's put it wide. And it's th no thanks to... Well, it's thanks to Southampton's poor penalty taking that we have gone through. I mean, some of that penalty taking was suspect in comparison to where I aimed the ball. But we get the win and Charlton through against Premier League opposition in the Carabao Cup. Well played. Yeah, very solid display from the boys. Everybody sort of between 6.5 and 8. Uh, Gilby, our highest rated player. I mean, missing that chance at the end for me automatically puts him down a fair bit. They played all right as well. I mean, it was a... It was a good game. It was a, it was a good game of football, and ultimately we come out on top. Right. So before we end this episode off, it seems Alfie Doughty has come to the office and has something to say. He said he's frustrated when he can't play regularly. I'm prepared to turn out in any position. You think I can benefit the team? So he he's already very happy, but he's complaining about his game time. So I'm not really sure how to take this. I've got you in mind, don't worry, which is absolutely true. I mean, we do want to see Alfie Doughty make that left wing position his own. I mean, we want him and Elliot Gomez to be going head to head for that left wing position. Um, so, yeah, weird. Let's have a look at the development plan of Alfie Doughty just to end things off and see how far along he is in his way to on his way to becoming a left winger full fledged. So where's left wing backs? Here he is. Alfie Doughty. Let's have a look. So he's still 23 weeks away from becoming a left winger. His finishing and attacking position has got up a little bit, as has his acceleration. Guys, I must remember, at the beginning of the next episode, I have to sort out player contracts, because otherwise I'm going to forget, and it's going to end in tears. So, I would say don't let me forget, but there's no way you can communicate to me via a video. So I just need to remember. It's on me to remember. By the way, Charlton and Sunderland running away with the league. We are nine points clear of Wigan and only one point clear of Sunderland. So we're looking set for automatic promotion, but lots more football to be played. Overall though, first quarter-ish of the season, not quite a quarter, but almost, uh, has been very, very solid for us. And we need to continue this form going into the next episodes. But guys, thank you so much for watching once again uh, an episode of the Charlton Athletic Career Mode. Don't forget guys, there is an episode right now, the first episode of the Clubs in Trouble series live on the channel. Um, and we take on, we take over West Ham and try and re-establish them as a top Premier League side. So make sure you give that a watch, guys. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See you next time.